Hello everyone and welcome to the first devlog of my new game Arcade Wizard 2. This is a sequel to my first game Arcade Wizard. In case you don't know what Arcade Wizard is because I haven't talked about it for a while now, I think it's best to show some footage from an earlier video. Here I explain the gameplay loop from the game. You start a new game, you skip the story, you start the tutorial level, kill a chest, collect the gold from the chest, kill the mobs, collect the gold from the mobs and beat the tutorial. Unlock an orb or a skin, upgrade your powers, start another level, kill the mobs, collect gold, die from the mobs, upgrade the wizard, restart the level, kill the mobs, collect the gold, beat the level this time, unlock another orb or skin, repeat this until you reach the final boss, beat the boss, skip the ending story, start a new game plus, buy an arcade upgrade which doesn't get reset after you start a new game plus, and repeat this never ending cycle. So that's Arcade Wizard 1, and now let's head over to the demo of Arcade Wizard 2. Right when I start up the game you can see that there's a little bit of a difference because I'm talking about a run in this button. Uh, it just ignore the fact that this UI just looks terrible right now because it's just temporary UI. And that's because I'm still in the prototype phase. Now whenever I start a run I just get dumped in this level and you can see that spawners spawn at random locations on the map. Then after the spawners are spawned then the enemies will spawn from them and the player can just kill them. Enemies still spawn coins and stuff like the previous game so you can still pick those up and fill your wallet. By the way, I didn't add any UI or stuff so you cannot see a cool wave 3 animation or something like that whenever a wave starts. And also whenever the level is cleared you don't get an animation yet. I will build those in later but for now I'm just focusing on the gameplay and I think the UI is going to be the last thing I'm going to do in this game. In the top right you can see a debug menu. Here I can for now just keep track of all the things that are going on in the game. So as you can see whenever I clear the level I get presented these four options. These are upgrades that are going to be valid during the run. So this can make me stronger in the run. For now I'm going to pick power because I can kill the enemies faster that way. And now whenever I hit an enemy you can see that I'm two-shotting these mushrooms instead of three-shotting them like the previous round. Now there is going to be a little bit of a difference compared to the previous game and that is whenever I die all these upgrades that I gained during the run are going to be reset. But I get to keep all the gold that I collected. I didn't build in this feature yet, but I'm going to build that whenever you lose the run, you get to keep your gold and then purchase upgrades in some kind of upgrade menu or maybe some kind of cool skill tree. Besides that, I'm also planning on having more orbs just like the previous game, but this time you can just unlock them by buying them with gold instead of having to unlock them at random for clearing a stage. Also, I'm still going to use different skins, but instead of skins, I'm going to make it different heroes and they will have different abilities, like maybe they can go through fire, maybe they can fly over pits, maybe they can go through walls or maybe one has more armor, stuff like that. So I'm going to do a lot with randomness in this game. This is to keep things fresh so you don't do the same thing over and over again. This means that the level layouts will be different each time you do a run and the enemy amounts will be different each time you do a run. I will do a fixed enemy type per level, something like that. So every time you do the first level only blobs and mushrooms will spawn. And every time you do the second level blobs, mushrooms and flies will spawn. And then the third level mushrooms, flies and snails. Stuff like that, I'm going to do it like that. So now that you know what the game is going to look like a little bit, I'm going to talk about the Unity project for a second. Because one of the most fun things about doing a new project is to have a fresh start and do the stuff differently than last time because you get new insights and you don't want to mess with the old stuff anymore. So in this project I structured my scripts a little bit better because in Arcade Wizard 1 it was quite a bit of a mess. So right here you can see I have a bunch of different folders in the scripts folder. The first one is going to be the Arcade Wizard folder. This is going to be all the game logic like coins, damage, enemies, entities, health bar, players, stuff like that. And this is going to be non-unity code, so just plain old C-sharp code. The reason I'm splitting it up like this is because I want to be able to run tests on these uh, scripts. And uh, well, Unity behaviors aren't really testable. So moving on, we have the behaviors folder. And this is all the Unity behavior stuff. So this links the arcade wizard logic to the Unity engine, if that makes sense. After that, we have the legacy folder. We don't talk about that. That's old stuff. Then we have the tests folder. 
has a couple of tests in it, will probably expand a lot in the future. And then we have the tiles folder and these contain the tiles for the tile system. Now if we take a look at the screen we can see that we have two scenes, a run scene and a main menu scene. The main menu is with the, uh, well it's the scene with the start run button, will probably change a lot in the future. And then we have the run scene. The run scene just has the level in it and it also has a bunch of extra stuff like the player, the grid and some other helpers. So the run manager, this thing keeps track of the run and the whole run is just happening in th inside this scene. So I'm not doing any scene switches during a run. This is because, well, the levels are generated so I only really need one scene to load in stuff and Doing separate scenes also has a lot of scene management. So if I want to change one thing about the UI, I have to do it in every scene or I have to make a prefab of it and stuff like that. But sometimes you do something and you don't really need to make a prefab of it yet. And before you know it, you get a lot of extra overhead with it. So I also built a couple of development tools. So here you can see I already placed some tiles for the borders of the level. But whenever I start this game up, you can see that tiles will change up a bit because, well, the level is generated. If I pause this for a sec, you can see that I build, you can see all these circles. And this is because I built a level scanner. And this thing basically just checks every tile position to see if it's free. So it can place a spawner for the enemies there. In the future, I can expand upon this system a bit more because I can maybe build stuff like, okay, put fire pits in against all the walls. So imagine having a fire pit uh, against all the walls and these fire pits go on and off on a timed sequence, something like that. And then the player can strategically move across the fire pits and lure enemies into it. I think this element can add a lot to the strategic part of the game because one of the complaints was that the game was just blasting away at mobs and just running away. But this time I want to add a bit more strategy to it. So this is it for this week and I, I think this is a, a nice transition to what I want to do next week because right now the game already kind of works you have the upgrade system and stuff in place but in the next devlog i want to talk about the enemy ai because right now well let me reset the level so i can show you right now whenever the enemies get stuck behind a wall they will just hog the wall so they will just walk against it and while they're not able to see you so i'm going to change up the behavior a little bit to make it more fun <coughs> And I'm also going to improve the level generation a little bit. But for the most part, my first focus will be the AI. And that about wraps up this devlog. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to stay updated on this game, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you're interested in Arcade Wizard, well, Arcade Wizard 1 is already available on mobile and on web. So I will put links to it in the description. So feel free to check it out if you're interested. And I hope to see you in the next devlog.